Lenny Dotani. I was born in Israel, an artist, an architect, and a researcher. My research is based in UCL in London at the Slade School of Fine Art. So my relationship with air pollution came quite late in my life. In Israel, my interests were different than the one in London. UCL, where I'm based most of my time, is one of the most polluted areas in London. So on a daily basis, I was exposed to this dangerous killer. And this was scary because it's invisible. I am very, very concerned as a mother for the next generation, the children. 9,000 people die as a consequence of air pollution every year in London. In 2050, the number of deaths caused by air pollution will exceed those related to cancer and AIDS together. We all have seen these images in the news from China uh, wearing a mask and uh, all the skies are really brown. The air pollution they have is actually coal pollution and it is visible. And that, in a way, makes the false impression that we're not that bad here in London because our sky is still blue. But it's not true. It's as bad as what you can see there. It's just a different type of pollution. It is invisible. Portland is a tiny island in the south of England. They have special stones there called Portland stones. Those stones are one of the main building materials in London since 1666 and the Great Fire of London. I was thinking about making sculptures that will be reactive to air pollution. So it all came together, the idea of using the Portland stone as in the carriers of pollution and imagery. I took 200 Portland stones from Portland to London, polluted them with London air pollution and other materials, and brought them back to be healed. The project name is Portland Stone Rehabilitation Center. I like this name because it really tells the material, the place, the aim and this hope that things are reversible. This project is a good opportunity to have a large impact on showing the differences between a polluted area and an unpolluted area. Once we arrived to London, I realized that every time we sneeze or blow our nose, we just take black pollution from our body. If I experience it as an artist, I have the opportunity to visualize it for others. Raoul is the main collaborator who I worked with through the year. I told him I have an idea about a rehabilitation center for sculptures. And he started walking in the garden in circles like crazy scientists. And after half an hour, he came back to me and said, I think we can do it. Since then, we just started a completely different conversation of how we can combine art and science. I think art is an excellent medium for communication, awareness. I often say if science is the thought, art is the voice. These two discourses, which are not that far away from each other, made a beautiful symbiosis. I brought in Andrea Sella. Andrea is a science communicator at UCL, as our spiritual guru, if you want. And he brought in his student, Sana. I always say, students are the ones who actually do the work. We're doing research on detecting pollution in the atmosphere with chemical optical sensors. Usually in science, it's more data oriented, but with the artistic nature, we're able to translate that into something more visual. So it's really interesting to see how we could apply that to the whole pollution aspect. It was also my interest in the air pollution subject and how you can use colorimetric sensors to bring up the invisible to the visible. 
The basic idea was creating a formulation where we used a very well-known colorimetric reaction, it's called the gris salmon reaction, combine that with a thickener and with a photocatalyst, in this case titanium dioxide or TiO2, to print images on a Portland stone. So that gris saltzman reagent, it's comprised of two compounds. So one is NED, NED solution, and the other one is sulfonylamide, which is an acid. So when they're reacted together, they actually pick up nitrite ions, which are constantly in the atmosphere due to nitrogen dioxide, which is a very common pollutant given off from cars and vehicles on the road. So once it picks up those ions, it changes from colourless to a fuchsia. It becomes pinker and pinker as the levels of pollution are higher. Really what that was representing is a degradation of these Portland stones in London and its exposure to pollution in the atmosphere. The TiO2 eventually will degrade the ink under the sunlight. Metaphorically, we're using TiO2 as a reverse mechanism. So what would happen if the pollution was broken down from the atmosphere? It would turn from fuchsia to colourless. We then had a material that is both indicating and degrading. The formulation had to be just right. The right intensity in terms of colour, the right thickness, so we can use it for printing these images. And then it had to self-destruct at the right time. There was a moment just before we had to deliver the project when we couldn't find a solution. I told Raoul, nothing is working. We have to deliver it in September. There is no way back. We have a contract. I remember telling Lenny, OK, I'm going to be in the lab with Sana and I'm going to bring Andrea Sella as well. The three of us will work on this for a day. And at the end of that day, if we don't come out with anything useful, then you will have to cancel the whole project. Lenny was so nervous about it that she spent the whole day with us also in the lab with her lab coat and her goggles. Lenny had a huge role in pushing for the outcome of it. It was very interesting from my perspective to have that urgency in this project because it made me think about the deadline that we have as a human race. That urgency is also there. We didn't know until the very, very last moment if we will be able to execute it or not. I'm so happy that we overcame it and uh, found the solutions and uh, made it possible after all. Once the scientist gave me their materials, I took them to my studio and started my own research with the material. So I divided the stones into groups. Each one was testing the material differently. I got very much inspired by the way they are working. So they had their test and I had my test. I wanted it to look like a scientific research. And this is what it was. This one is a print with the TiO2 and then on top of it, pollution. This one has TiO2, then pollution, then black print made out of industrial paint. Through this work, I really wish to turn the invisible into visible and also the unquestionable questionable. Whatever is swiped under the carpet, as an artist, you want to take it out and take all the dirt and Oh, look at the dirt, you know, look at it. I had the 200 stone, which was two tones. I had to deliver them back to Portland. However, now they were not just broken pieces of cut stone. Each one was an artwork. We sat in the van on the way to Portland and I thought, all right, this is it. Now we're on the way, we're doing it.
I think the engagement with the public was a really an integral part of the project. On each group of stones, they made a keystone, and this keystone contained all the symbols of the materials, and then the public got those little cards and could read what the stone contains. So they were part of the process of the project, part of the experiment. Okay, look, yeah. you, see these, you see these? Yeah. It's got the symbols of what it was. So here, she's put yes, a degree in pollution on, and then they tell you what's on And then it's London's air pollution. The keystone blocked part of the stone from UV light. So you could really see the changes between what was before and what was after. There was one group at the very end that almost completely disappeared. I want to think that this project made a little impact on people's understanding uh, of the problem of air pollution and showing the differences between a polluted area and an unpolluted area and having the conversation about what is invisible. People were absolutely blown by the fact that what they see is actually the result of air pollution. Only then they could appreciate the quality of their air in relation to London's air. The aim was really to expose people to the problem of air pollution, but also to show them that through science there are some solutions. I think it is important to make people understand that they are part of the change. I always say we are on the verge of an environmental pandemic. So far, we have been the virus. We just need to learn now to be the immune system, to learn how to tackle all these problems. And I think every cell in that immune system is very important. It's a question of responsibility that we all have to take, the artists, the scientists, the individuals, I wish the relationship with the chemistry department will continue and we will make more projects that will bring more awareness to the problem of air pollution through making pollution sensitive artworks so the public can see live air pollution. I always saw a very pessimistic kind of view. The images of the child shouting, it was like a last shout from Earth, but it resulted in a very positive message because of the rehabilitation of these stones. And I thought it was a great message in the end to have for the public. Just to say, yes, we know it is bad, but it's going to get better. <laughs>